It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the show. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Have you ever wondered what you should do with your old retirement account when you leave an employer or you're laid off? What are your options for dealing with those old 401ks you've left behind? And how do you make the best choice possible? We'll tell you how to approach these decisions and answer listener questions this hour on Wise Money. We love, we love hearing from you. We love receiving your questions. You have questions for the show, send them to us. You have needs, you need some, you need some guidance, you need some wisdom to take the right wise step in your financial life. Reach out to us. We'd love to help. You can find us online, wisemoneyshow.com, and you reach out to us right there on the right. You can call or text us, 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. And then all over social media, you'll find the Wise Money Show there. Wherever you're at, we are there too. Just search the Wise Money Show, follow us there, and you can leave comments, questions, reach out to us that way as well. All right, so we've got record unemployment going on, and and we'll find out the uh, the actual unemployment rate here pretty soon. But um, you know, if you if you look at the chart. Maybe we'll link it below in on the YouTube channel. But if you look at the chart going back decades and decades and decades of initial unemployment claims, it looks like just a flat line actually now mm -hmm. because was it four weeks ago? It went from oh a couple hundred thousand initial unemployment claims to three point three million, and then six point eight million, and then six point six million, and then five point three million, and then four point four million. That's per week. Per week of new numbers. So there's a whole bunch of people who are a little shell-shocked right now. That's right. Their world has been turned upside down at no fault of their own. It's all for the sake of trying to deal with um, an unseen a danger in, in our society right now. But unfortunately, it's having an, an economic impact on a lot of families. So 26 million people that are unemployed basically undid all of the new job growth since September of 2010. And so it, there are a couple of responses to that. One is to say, I am completely traumatized and I can't function. And if you are there, get some help. Yeah. Get someone to help you function. But if you're ready to get going, I think today's show is for you because no. there, there's work to do right now on your finances. And you got to get that work done on your finances because it's not going to be long, I believe, before we're all back doing something in some way, shape or form. It's probably going to look differently, but it will be uh, you're, you're going to be too busy to do what needs to be done right now. Yeah, you got to attend to your finances for sure. And, and really the idea, this is, a, this is a, a, an evergreen idea, and that is, well, what do you do with an old 401k? It's just that with so many folks now finding themselves unemployed, um, more and more people right now have an old 401k than before. But, but I will tell you this, just a couple of geeky stats, because you know I'm known for that. Apparently, there's over 900,000 unclaimed 401ks out there at the different state unclaimed websites. That is astounding. 900,000 401ks. Kevin, and you've called the 401k your best wealth building tool available has basically been lost by some 900,000. But even if it's not lost, even if you say, no, I know exactly where mine is, it's sitting right over there with my old employer, are you stewarding that money properly? Especially now when your financial decisions are magnified, they're much more important during crisis. Are, you, do, are those dollars structured exactly the way they should be? Well, they're much more important during crisis. They're much more important during transition points as well. And you just described 900,000 people who reach some sort of a career transition point, a change in their life, and they didn't take any kind of action in their financial life because of it. And maybe inaction was the right choice. We don't know. But more often than not, there are opportunities available to you to really improve the structure of your, your investment portfolio, your readiness for retirement, all because of a transition like this where you're changing jobs or even, yes, even cases where you were laid off. Mm -hmm. Temporarily, yeah. 
Yeah, I, if you said, what should we be doing right now? You should be looking at these old 401ks. We have, I have a couple interesting stories. One is a client that had 20 some thousand in an old mass mutual 401k. We still haven't been able to get to the right place to get that money. And then another client with a, a principal, what he thought was a 401k, it's not, it's an IRA. So the the company actually made a change for him. It's no longer in a 401k. And I personally have had experience with Indiana Unclaimed because I've got a couple of old online money market accounts that are that have just been sitting there and I used to use them for certain purposes and I haven't. And when I went to go and access the money, they're now in Indiana unclaimed. So if you said, all right, what do I need to do? If you have an old 401k, you need to deal with that, get that cleaned up, but also go online and to Indiana Unclaimed or Michigan Unclaimed and see, because I've seen people that just didn't use a certain bank account frequently enough, and that bank account ends up at Indiana Unclaimed. Yeah, there's actually a full process that's pushed out that if you don't have a certain amount of activity going on in these certain uh, financial accounts, then companies are forced to push them to unclaimed. So you don't want that to happen with your most important wealth building tool, and you don't want that to happen with any dollar, with any penny. So so keep your stuff organized. But before we get in really to the action items, hopefully you're hearing us loud and clear that having an old 401k would, if I can say it boldly, it's just not acceptable. I just wouldn't do it. Um, that's like leaving clothes at an old house that you, that you, uh, that you sold. You, you would never do that. You take your stuff with you, take your stuff with you. But what are your options with your old 401k? Well, you have a handful of them and let's get the, the least desirable one out of the way first. Yes, you do have the option of cashing that thing in. And unfortunately, way too many people take that choice, especially if leaving the employer, Um, is creating some sort of a financial hardship in your life, being laid off or, um, you know, being fired, being downsized, whatever word you want to use. If all of a sudden you don't have a paycheck coming in, a lot of folks look to their bank accounts to, to see if they can make ends meet for a while, but that money runs out. And eventually people are tempted to dip into their long-term savings, their 401ks and IRAs and things like that. And, uh, I guess I would just say that should be one of your last options that you go to for sure. I, I actually, let's, let's camp on that for just a second, because if, if we are to read into what's going on with this crisis and this surge in new unemployment claims, that option that you said is the least desirable might feel the most appealing right now, right. depending on where you're at in your financial life. But here's why I would at least pause before you would just take that action is when you pull money out of that 401k, there could be mandatory withholding for the, so meaning, and that just, oh gosh, that sounded like gobbledygook right there. Yeah, they're going to peel taxes off the top. They're going to set a certain amount aside and send it to the IRS. Is that the right amount? Is it too little, too much, or just right, Goldilocks? I have no idea. But if you're in in need of, of, of money and you then decide I need to pull this money out of my IRA. You want to make sure the right amount goes to the to to taxes. That not too little or not too much because either one of those gets you in trouble and you don't have the right amount of money in your possession. Um, the second thing that I would tell you is there's a whole bunch of new laws in regards to the CARES Act and this stimulus package that might mean some of that money shouldn't be penalized. It might mean you can delay and defer the tax. It might mean you should have more control over how much is being withheld and being sent to you. So before you just say, okay, I've got this 10 grand, I'm going to pull this money out, pause and look at your options. We're going to tell you a little bit more about what those options are and then talk about the other things that you can do with your old 401k. That and more coming up here on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being with us. This is the Wise Money Show. You're at the Wise Money Show channel. Thanks for being here. Of course, if this is your first time here, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on. But subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, smash that like button. We appreciate that. Um, So every single week, we do a full one-hour radio show that airs on a couple radio stations in northern Indiana. And we just record the whole thing and post it on YouTube so you can watch the entire 
episode. Watching the whole thing, if that's not your thing, we post weekly, or right now it's daily, um, uh, next wise steps, little financial nuggets that you can capture and that help spur you on to take the right next step in your financial life. So thanks for being here. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that uh, notification, smash that thumbs up, leave comments, questions, all that below. Thank you very much. All right, so last time when we bought our house, we, uh, you know, we're moving in. Kevin, you remember that day? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a quick story here. How could I forget, Mike? <laughs> As, uh, there, we had about a, a four-week lag between selling our house and moving into the new one. And Kevin was like, yeah, I got this snowmobile trailer. You could just park some stuff in there. And so we filled up a storage unit, and then we filled up Kevin's snowmobile trailer. And it just sat there, idle, with a whole bunch of furniture in it until the day we were moving in. And my father-in-law is driving the truck with the trailer attached to it. And we go over some railroad tracks, (laughs) and it's just... And I look in the rear mirror, and basically the wheel axle had popped and um one of the wheels was jammed against the uh the side of the the um trailer yeah Yeah. it was a double axle trailer and the back one uh took leave double axle it became single axle so if you can imagine (laughs) so so (laughs) so having asking someone for help with moving is just a it does that's a it's a test of a friendship. Right that there, is right there. It? But but imagine <laughs> saying, hey, you are going to help me move. And w- I actually need you to come meet me on the side of the road because we got to take all this furniture out of this out of this trailer, put it into something else and then move it. And then, of course, figure out what in the world to do with. And we did yeah. quickly. Yeah, we uh, we unloaded the trailer, got the stuff where it needed to go. And uh, the trailer limped home. I was a good friend. That, I love that story because. It's so reassuring to me that I'm not the only one that's broken all of Kevin's stuff. <laughs> well, anyway, so so we finally get into the house, and I go into the closet, and the uh, the guy that the the folks that we bought the house from, he had a bunch of ties and clothes and stuff still in the closet. Really, really left it yeah. behind for yeah, you. Yeah, huh? left it behind. So I kind of thumbed through. You don't wear like, ties well, anymore. Well, there were a couple. When was the last time you wore a tie? It's it's years now, not months. Yeah, I'm saying it's years. Yeah, I used to. That used to be my my thing. Yeah. Except you guys know you, you wore it loosely. I always wear it loose, <laughs> and because I have a big neck, or at least it feels like a big neck. And uh, <laughs> anyway, and then when and then we switched to a jacket. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not doing this tie anymore. I'll just wear a jacket every day. And then now it's just a touch the more casual. Polo. Yep. It'll be a t-shirt before too long here. Yeah. Good rate we're going, huh? Good Tank day. top. <laughs> All right. So um did I did we did, should we talk about CARES Act stuff related to that? Or I think do we... we at least need to remind people about the ten percent penalty. Yeah. I mean, under normal circumstances where there's not special rules and everything. So I think we gotta talk to the person. Don't lose sight of that. So here's the thing. Right now, the, there are 26 million people who feel like the ship is sinking, and so I've got to let down the lifeboat. Yeah. And that might be the right answer, but maybe the right answer is patch the hole in the doggone ship and bail like a, a yeah. mother. Just get it, get the water out of the boat. And so I think if we can provide hope Yeah. and, and, and tell people, Tell people call your stinking financial advisors. Mm. Call your call your certified financial planner and talk through it with them. This is and and this is where I would tell I would encourage people. This is where you want to you you've, you want to have an already established relationship with your banker. If you're if you're needing any PPP EIDL, you want to have an already re- established relationship if possible with your financial advisor. If you don't. Find a certified financial planner who can start a relationship with you, even if we're starting. You know, this this isn't the, you know, the funnest way to start a relationship is look, I, yeah. I've been doing everything right, and I've got too much money in my bank account. What should I do? Yeah. But if you, you know, if you've got a, a three alarm fire, let's start. Let's get started. Let's yeah. get let's get it 
done. All right, so we'll pick it back up and go from there. What do you do if you have an old 401k sitting around or, or not that old because it's a job that you're laid off or furloughed from? What, what are your options and, and why should you do anything at all? That's what we're talking about today. Thanks for being with us. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, my business partners, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. If you have questions for the show or questions for us We'd love to help you. You can find us online, wisemoneyshow.com, and then all over social media, wherever you're at, you'll find us. Just search The Wise Money Show and follow us there, but then reach out to us there as well. If you have questions, if you have needs, we can help. Just find us find us there. Okay, so we left off talking about if you've got an old 401k, and it could be an old 401k, meaning the job you were just at a couple weeks ago, and they, they laid you off. Um, what are your options? The first option is the least desirable, but it, it might feel really, really desirable right now because there's 26 million people that have recently filed for unemployment, and you might feel like financially um, I'm in a sinking ship. And, and we would tell you there's hope, and you're not stuck there, right? There is hope, and you can get through this. Um, and part, it might start with making a great decision with the 401k. So what else do we need to know um, regarding possibly drawing the money out? Well, yeah, that's right. The, the option number one was to cash the thing in, start using it to um, kind of patch the, the, the hole in the ship right now. Or at least that's what the fear is, that you're somehow just getting a quick fix here. But the, the risk is you end up paying taxes that you really weren't anticipating, not only income taxes, but also 10% penalty in most cases. Um, but t- to me, I, I want to talk to those who um, are st- they're not in this situation right now, and you need to avoid it at all costs. So what can you do in your financial life to not put yourself in a position where cashing in long-time or, or long-term retirement accounts um, is your only option. Don't get yourself painted into a corner. You want to have distance between you and crisis living so that if you are unemployed or you have some sort of emergency come up, you're not having to borrow money or liquidate long-term investments at a low point in the market for starters, but then also in adverse tax uh, consequences. And it really begins with some of those basic foundational things that you have to have built into your financial life like having an emergency fund. And one of the ways you get an emergency fund is by over a period of time, having some margin in your financial life. I'm talking budget here, managing your cash flow so that you've got cash building up for that rainy day situation. You might feel like, well, it's too late. We're already in a rainy day situation. Um, Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. You know, even during these times, there are still um, conservative choices you can make. There's still frugal action that you can you can take to keep yourself in a position where you've, you're holding on to as much cash as possible. If you are thinking it, it's going to be best for you to cash the old 401k out, talk to your certified financial planner first. I All of us have advised people to cash in an old 401k. If that's the best option, you're Certified financial planner is going to recommend that, okay? But they're also going to do that with all the lights on. They're going to look at every option to make sure that's the right one. And if it is, get you as prepared as possible to make that choice. So talk to your certified financial planner. Don't just think, well, if I talk to someone, they're going to try to sell me something or talk me out of this. Nope. Certified financial planner is a fiduciary. They are going to help evaluate all your choices and give you the best recommendation. Second, if this is tempting, you need to talk to your tax preparer. And ideally, that should be your certified financial planner. They should have either the, 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 the emergency line right to your CPA, or they should be collaborating with your CPA. That's what we do here at KFG. And, um, and because of that, I would also tell you, if you haven't filed your 2019 tax return yet, you need to get on that. Get it because done. Here we're talking about a potential trap here with cashing in 401k dollars, and all of a sudden there's this tax surprise. Um, I fear there's a lot of people out there that have delayed filing their 2019 tax return just to just to then have a big surprise when they do. Don't don't let that be you. 
get your tax return done. And, and that way there's some time, if there is a surprise, there's some time that you have to prepare for it before July 15th. It's also time to be turning your attention to 2020. Those yeah. of you whose paycheck has not been interrupted in any way, Maybe you need to be getting conservative with your tax planning as well, making sure that you don't have either a tax problem brewing, because who knows how long this economic slump is going to continue. But maybe if you're one of those individuals that just loves getting a big refund, and maybe you have one that's already started building for the first few months of this year, to wait to get that refund all the way till next tax filing season, next spring, may, may be foolish, quite frankly. Maybe you need that cash in your hand throughout this year, and you need to make some adjustments to your withholdings. Yeah, you don't want that illiquid illiquidity built into your financial life. Right now, it's being as careful as you can because you're trying, we're using the boat analogy, right? So you're saying, hey, I'm going to abandon the boat and hop in the lifeboat. I'm just going to take the 401k money and use that and in, in a vacuum, that could make some sense. So that's that's why I love the idea of saying, no, I'm going to either go back to my certified financial planner and say, what should I do? Or I'm going to start a relationship. We've mm-hmm. If we've learned anything in this crisis, it's you need to have a relationship with your banker because the folks who didn't and the folks that worked with big box bankers are still struggling. And they're, they, they find themselves somehow getting shuffled to the back of the line in, hey, I need to get some the PPP money, the EIDL money, all this stuff. So you want to have a relationship with your banker. You want to have a relationship with your financial planner and make sure that that financial planner is certified. And make sure you got a relationship with your um, your CPA. And if you say, well, I do, but I'm, I'm not hearing from them, well, reach out. Be proactive. Get, be the squeaky wheel uh, and, and get the grease. So the other option you have, another option you have with your old 401k is you could you could leave the dollars there. Now, that seems innocent and it seems like the easy option. Um, the problem is, uh, number one, it could be lost. And I, I, was, I was just amazed when I heard that nearly a million 401ks are lost, meaning not that that's a million 401ks that have just been left behind at old employers. No, left behind and and they completely forgotten and then. forgotten about. Yeah. So it could be it could be lost. Um, second, whenever there's changes in your financial life, it's hard to make changes to that 401k. So update beneficiaries or withdraw dollars or um, rebalance or make changes to your investments. It's always more difficult to do that in a 401k. And then the, the last reason that I would cite on why it'd be dangerous to leave it there is every 401k is set up where you have very limited investment choices, investment strategies available to you. And they do that because of the psychology of the more options available, the less likely someone is to contribute. So that just means within your 401k, you're not going to have a lot of options. And right now, right now is when you need to make sure you've got great clarity and confidence in your investment strategy. And when you only have a couple of choices, and you can't make a lot of changes frequently, uh, that's not the right strategy. So I wouldn't leave it in the old 401k. You know, the 401ks are a wonderful tool for building up wealth because it's so easy to make the contributions. Out of every paycheck, you can be squirreling away money for the long term. But as Mike said, sometimes you're really limited in what your investment choices are. And that's one of the reasons why in a perfect world, Uh, We want to get as much money back out of the 401k where you have more choice available, doing it prudently from a tax standpoint, but you have limited opportunities to get money out of a 401k. When you change jobs or you're laid off or you ultimately retire, those are a few of, uh, of your windows of time where you can make that move. Yeah. All right. So what about transferring the dollars to a new 401k or should you roll them into an IRA? Why? Why not? So we've got that and more coming up here on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. All right. I, I, uh, I do think there's, there's quite a bit of that. I mentioned it at the beginning of the segment that reluctance to talk to an advisor, talk to someone about an old 401k because I, I don't know what I don't know and I don't want to be talked into something that yeah. I'll later regret. Sure. Right? There's tons of stories about that. and That needs to come up on, 
on the air here. Yeah. There's there are tons of stories, as you say, people who have been talked into the wrong thing or fear being talked into it. But this is why this is why we tell you every segment of every show to contact your certified financial planner and make sure they're doing comprehensive financial planning. Why do we say that stuff? Uh, because it's like music to your ears. <laughs> it sounds so good. Just rolls off the tongue. No, it doesn't. It sounds terrible. But the truth is a certified financial planner has certain ethics and so on that they adhere to. They're fiduciary, number one, and they've been trained yeah. in, in how comprehensive financial planning is supposed to work. But not all CFPs are, do comprehensive financial planning. So then you want to find a CFP that does comprehensive planning because they're the ones that, can, that are going to look at how all six areas of your financial life fit together, and they're actually in a position to give the best advice. Right. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting. A certified financial planner should be process-driven, not product-driven. So if your CFP is leading with a product that that could just be, leave. Yeah, just leave. Be done. It, it's you know, it's it might feel impolite, but uh, you know, I was thinking about the uh, the old four hundred one k, and growing up, we had horses, and we would ride our horses, and I rode Sparky, who was a Shetland pony, and if you kept the reins loose, um, I we never had a saddle for Sparky, so I always rode him bareback, and there were there were a number of rides where we would go across into the Manistee National Forest and ride for hours and hours and hours. But there were a number of rides where I would um, fall off and we would have to chase Sparky around to try to catch him because he wouldn't just, if I fell off, he wouldn't just wait there. <laughs> like check on you to make sure you were all right and he right. wouldn't come. And a number of times the reason why is I had I had been keeping the the reins way too loose, and I'd been lax, and you know you get complacent, and so the reins are loose, and then you need control over the animal, and you don't have it, and that's kind of where we are right now. There are a lot of people that have been just kind of kicked back, and I remember even times where I would just lay back on his back, wow, and and just walk through the the the, the forest, the trails, and everything, and. Um, you can't do that. Now is not a time for doing that. There, there are times when you can do that. Now is not a time for that. And, and so you have to have tight control over your financial life. So over your budget, over your old 401k, there should, you, you shouldn't be able to put those two together. Yeah. I shouldn't have an old 401k yet. Almost everyone does. Yeah. And so, and so Take control over your financial life, mm -hmm. and I and the reason for me, I mean, I look at that, and I I had this conversation last week. It's you can't get a multi year guaranteed annuity in your four hundred one k. So you got the money market account paying twenty five basis points, and you can have a five year multi year guarantee at three percent. Mm -hmm. And I <laughs> I had this conversation with the client over and over. He's like, well, what are the fees? Well, you, you don't see them. No, no, no. But what does it cost? Well, you don't, you're never going to see that. You're going to go in at 3%. That's what you're going to get every year for five years. Yeah. So. All right. So third segment. Yeah. So wrapping it up at 9.15, pause, and then we're going to have a long fourth segment. So we're hitting what right now? Did you like move your chair over? Did I? I don't know. Your face is cut off. We can't even see your horns. I was just... No, I did move this. Oh, you're right. Okay. So when I look, is that better? Yeah, that's better. Kevin was talking about horses. I'm like, I'm, I'm a wild man. I'm a wild stallion here. Like, I can't, <laughs> I mean, just, I don't know, moving all over the place. Okay. We good? 9.15? Wait, and we're talking about... We'll talk about 401ks. And we got to end on this time. <laughs> Good idea. We got to hit um, quickly, roll it into a new 401k, but quickly it's got to pivot to roll it into an IRA and why. Okay, good. I like that. Yeah.
Should you move your old 401k into an IRA? Why or why not? Kevin actually just shared that the, ter- the two words, old and 401k, should never be combined together. Yet so many people have them. That's what we're talking about today. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name's Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. If you're not watching the entire show on the YouTube channel, I'd encourage you to do so. Why? Because right in between episodes here, or segments here, we just had a great, great discussion, bonus content for you watching on the YouTube show. So basically at the beginning of the show, turn the cameras on and we just have the cameras recording throughout the entire show breaks and all. So lots of bonus content. And I'd also tell you, we have very frequent daily next wise steps, little financial nuggets that come out on the YouTube channel. So check us out there. Go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, subscribe to it, turn on notifications and give us that thumbs up. We appreciate that. All right. So we're talking about what to do with your old 401k. We mentioned, and I'll just hit the point again quickly, that I, I think even though you might want to cash it out, even though you might think a certain option is good, we're telling you contact your certified financial planner, CFP. Make sure they do comprehensive financial planning and they will walk through the right cho- all the choices for you and through the planning process will help you arrive at what the best option is for you. I think a lot of people are reluctant to do that, to reach out to professional because they have fear that they'll be talked into something, talked into something that isn't good for them that they won't be able to get out of. And at least I know what's in my old 401k. So that's better than falling into some sort of trap. I had a client situation, brand new client. They had come to one of our retirement courses. And after the second night, uh, kind of approached me and said, Hey, you know what? We've been looking for a financial advisor for a while. Haven't been able to find someone because every time we sit down with them, all they really care about is either managing the money for me or selling me a product. Are you willing to help us build a plan? And I said, that's what we do, right? And we charge a financial planning fee for it. And, and he said, okay, but you're not going to manage the money. And he, he kept on saying that. I said, listen, it, it would be imprudent for us to even propose investment ideas to you until you have a game plan. Because your, your retirement plan is what dictates what the right investment approach is. And so we went through this, this planning process and built the plan. And by the end of it, he was asking us, hey, I have these old 401ks that are scattered around the countryside from past jobs. I really want to get it consolidated. Will you manage it for me? Will you help me get this in place? And it was because he knew that the investments that we would help him put in place were there to fund the retirement goal that he had arrived at. Yeah. That is one of the reasons why people do leave 401ks at old employers. Or, um, you know, they're reluctant to ever move it to their new employer, which we, that, that is one of your options to roll an old 401k into your new employer's 401k. We don't, we don't typically recommend that, except for in certain circumstances, partially because, again, you're still in that situation where you may not have the best investment lineup at your disposal. It may not be the best way for you to achieve your investment goals here. That's why most people, when they're given the opportunity to get money out of a 401k, rolling it to an IRA is the scenario that makes the most sense. I've always, I've, I've always thought of it this way. In, um, in, in just about every area of my life, I've sought freedom and, and choice the absence of choice is, um, I mean, that's bondage. Mm-hmm. And so even, uh, not to be too spiritual, Lord and Savior, right? That is the, my, Jesus Christ that gave freedom, right? And so um, anytime I look at even this very, very small choice of what to do, um, do I put it into a new 401k where I don't have lots of choice? Or do I go to an IRA where I have almost almost limitless choice? I always go with more choice. Mm-hmm. Always. Yep, I agree. It's not just choice on what your investment options are. When you get into retirement or it's time to begin withdrawing out of your retirement plans, time to start living off this money, you have more flexibility with an IRA. You're not dictated to on how much to withhold for taxes. 
It's easy. There's so many different ways that you can set up those distributions, whether it's a monthly or even a semi-monthly distribution. Maybe you just want to pull money out periodically. There's even creative ways as you get deeper into retirement to use your IRA to do some of your charitable giving. Um, you, you just have more options, more choice, as you were saying, Mike. That's right. Yeah, you and leave again. Leaving these plans around the countryside, as you said, Josh, it creates complexity in your financial life that's unnecessary. So if I have the money in my IRA and the coronavirus hits or the next emergency hits. I have a lifeboat that I actually could drop over the side of the boat. It, again, we don't recommend that, but the options that I have available to me, not only investment options, but the planning options, the easily converting IRA to Roth IRA options. You just stole the words out of my mouth there. Uh, I wanted to cut you off and inject that idea. Bank caught stealing. You're exactly right. And there are a lot of folks who the year 2020 is going to be a lower income year for you. Maybe you've had some sort of interruption to your income, something has changed, maybe your revenues from your small business are down, whatever. This could be an opportunity for you to get some money shifted out of an IRA and into a Roth IRA, intentionally paying the taxes on that early so that from here on out, the growth, I'll say the rebound in your investments is happening in a tax-free environment as opposed to a taxable environment. I actually think, let me go back to your investment philosophy, your investment strategy, because I, I think that is the crux. To me, that's that's it's freedom and all of that, but really the freedom of investment strategy choice, I think is is enormous and it really is obvious in today's environment. We believe, you guys, um, you, you know this, we believe that you should have a diversified, I mean, all of this needs to fit within your financial plan. So Josh, you're absolutely right. It would be imprudent to come up with an investment recommendations without looking at your at your entire financial picture. That's all six areas of your financial life and how they intersect and how they connect to your goals, okay? After that process is done, coming up with an investment strategy, but the crux of it is diversification, okay, with low cost index type or low cost investment options coupled with a momentum strategy. If a momentum strategy says, gosh, yeah, international investments are a terrible place to be right now, the momentum strategy isn't in international, but you've got your pivot foot over here, which is your, which is your, hey, I'm, no one knows the future. I'm staying diversified. And that tandem, that tandem connected with and in the context of your entire financial plan has been magical during this crisis. Absolutely. And and if you, you can't get that in a 401k. I've actually, I'm assuming you guys have had people ask, hey, can you do this momentum strategy? Can you, can you run your models within the 401k? And you can't. That's right. So. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of folks who um, may feel a little bit paralyzed right now because the market is down. And you've heard millions of people say, lots of financial experts say, Hey, as long as you don't sell when it's down, then you haven't really locked in the losses. So people just kind of ride through the storm and never make any kind of changes. Well, there are still actions that you can take during these, these kind of volatile, crazy times in the market. You don't have to just sit through and ride through blindly. Mm -hmm. You don't have to just wait for the storm to pass. There may be some things that you should be taking right now, but that has to be decided upon in the context of your overall plan. That's why we keep steering you back to your certified financial planner. That's that's exactly right. I couldn't have said it better myself. And, and I, I hope that discussion helps you take your next wise step in your financial life. All right. We've got great questions from fans of the show coming up in just a moment. So that and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. I think I got that pause right in there. I'm glad you can keep track of all that. Where to just pause, where to take a breath. I was thinking about this last night. So Cindy did a, uh, a Zoom call with some friends um, who live across the country, hadn't seen them in a long time. And they set the call up around 8.15 or whatever, and I can't stay up late. So I go to bed and I, and uh, 
I, when we woke up this morning, she said, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sure I was being loud. I, did, I had no idea what time it was. And I'm going to say this to you guys. I don't think there's ever been a time in my life where I've lost track of time. <laughs> ever. In any no. situation, any circumstance, I think I'm always, my brain's always just aware. And, I, and Cindy's very, very punctual and very aware of time. But when she starts conversating like with people, neighbors, whatever, it's very easy that she loses track of time. I don't think I've ever lost track of time. Ever. <laughs> Ever, ever, ever. Not in any of the meetings I've been in with you. <laughs> yeah. It's just, Mike I'm will just always stand aware up of it. when, okay, this meeting's over. Uh, when Mike stands up, you just know, okay, we're on borrowed time now. <laughs> I know so. exactly what you're talking about. I don't think I've ever <laughs> had track of time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's just natural for me to be attentive to managing the clock here. You're the right guy for the job. Well, and so the YouTube audience... Mike is essentially managing the show for two different radio stations, two different formats. So we've kind of structured least common denominator. I'm sure there's some sort of math in there. Um, but to, to be able to think in terms of, okay, we've got to be done at these precise times for this show. We've got a little bit longer. We can go on this other one. Uh, it's, uh, hats off to you. It's Michael not too Paul. precise because behind the camera is Lindsay, and she cleans it all up to make sure it fits. So... All right, so longer segment here, fourth segment, land on the plane. And, I mean, we can pick up on anything. I mean, we, I feel like we put the bow on it, but we can always bring it back up. Um, and then we've got some questions from fans of the show. Each of these questions I've already answered to them, but a good good uh, questions for the whole audience. So, cool. And honestly, with these two questions here, there's uh, – there's going to be room to go wherever we want. We can pick the co the topic back up and give more call to action. In fact, what? I don't know. I, maybe it just seems like a familiar question because we've heard it many times before. We've not answered it on the show, though. Correct. Right? Yeah, correct. So do we do we just lay out specifically the CARES Act as it relates to the we can. Or not. We're not. Uh, I don't know. We can't. I, I think I want to start with, with action, calls to action from the previous stuff. Okay. Just, yeah. And then we'll get into these questions. So. Uh, so is this stimulus check that you received, is that taxable? What about the unemployment? What, what about unemployment period? But what about the additional $600? Ah, oh, those are great questions. Questions from a friend of mine, Rick, that he posted on YouTube. We're going to answer that in just a, a moment. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. If you've missed anything here uh, on this episode of the Wise Money Show, every single episode in its entirety, you can find a few different places. One on the YouTube channel, that's my favorite place because you've got a whole bunch of other content there as well. Second, on podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can just search for the Wise Money Show and you'll find us there. You can subscribe to it. So every, every week the episode gets pushed right out to you. And then also on the website as well. So you'll find us on YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, podcast, search the Wise Money Show, and online, wisemoneyshow.com. All right, before we transition to questions from, you know, Rick's question, we've got a great question from Jeff and Niles as well. Just want to just recap the action items that we hit because, gosh, talking about your old 401k, it, uh, it's hard. It, really, any topic, it's hard to not talk about various areas of your financial life. And so I, I guess if we could recap the action items, the most direct one is if you've been laid off, if you've been furloughed, if you've, um, if you've lost your job, or if you just have a retirement account, 401k, 403b, simple IRA, you name it, with a previous employer, you've got options, okay? And right now is a time in this financial uncertainty where you want to have clarity and confidence with all of your dollars. Those are hard-earned dollars. You want to have clarity and confidence with all of them. So if that's you, 
contact your certified financial planner, make sure they're doing comprehensive financial planning, sit down with them and talk about what are the what are my options with these dollars? What action should I take? If you don't have a certified financial planner and they don't do comprehensive financial planning, we can't help everyone, but you can certainly give us a call. We'd be happy to help either connect you with an advisor on our team or get you going on, on your right wise step. So you can contact us at each of those places or just find us online, corhorn.com, corhorn with a K. Um, we also talked about taxes and this sort of intersects with CARES Act sort of stuff. So Kevin, what's the call to action there or, or with, with taxes? Well, if you haven't gotten your 2019 taxes done because you said they move the deadline from April 15th to July 15th, I would encourage you to get your taxes done, especially if you are right now laid off, not working, fill in the blank, get your taxes done and filed. And you say, well, wait a minute, I think I might I might owe some money, so I don't know that I want to get them filed. Get them filed. You can pay the money by July 15th, and you're fine. If you're a business owner, as it relates to taxes, you, you, don't, you didn't have to make your first quarter estimate. That, that uh, can be done along with your second quarter estimate. And so there's all kinds of tax planning uh, situations that are coming up right now. But as it relates to the content of the show and what we've been talking about is if you are if you already have or you've been thinking about hopping in the lifeboat by taking an old 401k or an IRA and cashing it out, make sure you have a set aside already for the taxes that need to be paid and make sure you have a strategy. Am I going to pay it this year? Am I going to pay it over the next three years? What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? Because there are some special opportunities today that that weren't opportunities uh, three months ago and eventually will be gone as we get things back to normal. Yeah, the, the coronavirus-related distribution and a few other things as well. So talk to your certified financial planner and your CPA about that. But yeah, have a game plan for your taxes. If you haven't had them prepared yet, reach out to your CPA, have have them prepare your taxes. If you usually do it yourself or you go to a pop-up uh, tax prep place like an H&R Block, something like that, they might not be around. We are. We've got a full team of CPAs and tax professionals that are still cranking all day every day on, on getting taxes done. So we can help. Um, the last action item that I would mention, we talked about it just, just a moment ago, and that is um, with old 401k or really with any any investment dollars, do you have clarity and confidence in your investment approach? Are you taking the right strategies? We believe in having a multi-strategy approach. That is our investment philosophy. It adds extra layers of diversification so that when everything's moving in one direction, you've got more diversification that hopefully isn't, right? And and can help you balance out some of these rough times like we've seen this year. So getting a second opinion or just reviewing it with your certified financial planner to make sure you've got the right strategy. That's that. That's the last action item I'd communicate. So, all right, let's transition to questions from fans of the show. I want to start with Rick's question here. It's the second one, guys, on your list. But Rick from Granger, um, is unemployment taxable? And is the additional $600 a week that's coming from the CARES Act taxable as well? And is the stimulus check taxable? Great question. We, we hear this a lot. So unemployment benefits are taxable to you. If you're getting this income rolling in from your state, um, you, you got to pay attention to that on your tax return. The, the checks that are being deposited into everyone's uh, bank accounts, these $1,200 rebate checks, that is tax-free money to you. It's essentially a credit against your 2020 tax return. They're just giving it to you early, essentially. So it's it's really no different than receiving a child tax credit or a college credit, something like that. It's income coming uh, back to you, essentially. It's knocking your tax bill down for the coming year. They're not going to tax you on that money. You're being too nice. It doesn't. It does not make sense that they tax unemployment. Can I get an amen? I mean, it doesn't make sense, especially, especially the states. Because they're the ones giving you the money, usually. And because they don't let you withhold for the taxes. 
Yeah. Like you're saying, we're talking about the life, the, the, the lifeboat analogy. Hey, I need a lifeline. I need a life preserver. I'm on unemployment. And there's a gotcha. Guess what? It's taxable. Oh, I was aware of that. I'll withhold taxes for federal. Okay. They withhold 10%. That's it. Well, I might be in a higher tax bracket because I'm drawing money out of my 401k. And I heard these guys on the Wise Money Show tell me to cash in my 401k. So I <laughs> cash it all in. I've got a really big income. Um, I probably need to withhold more than 10%. Nah, you can't. Just 10%. Okay. Well, is it taxable to the state? No, certainly not. They're the ones sending me the money. Yeah, they're going to tax it too. Well, can I withhold against that? No. That is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. If you're not doing tax planning, my goodness, reach out to your tax planner. Yeah, right. and as Josh said, create margin so that if you are surprised, you, you'll you have some, some sort of resource to respond to that surprise. Okay, will they come out with, so will they expect, it keep these expanded enhanced unemployment benefits longer than they initially claimed. I don't know. In 2009, they they extended them significantly, but it wasn't Multiple nearly times, yeah. wasn't nearly as rich as today. I mean, this extra $600 per week is unprecedented for 16 yeah. weeks. For 16 weeks, will they stretch that and make it 24 weeks no. or 36? No, I I I would imagine and again, I don't know for sure, but I would imagine that as things start kicking back into gear and people will start going back to work and start functioning, even if we're greeting each other from six feet away, um, I, I think th- I think they're going to try and curtail this fairly quickly. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would I would think so as well. But but it is taxable. Make sure you're doing tax planning with your certified financial planner. And I don't know, the whole thing just seems unfair to me. I mean, it just seems like if they're going to tax the money, just give me less. Just give me less and tell me it's tax-free. Hey, Josh. All right. Yeah. We, 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 need, we need to have that you, talk with Mike. That's right. <laughs> We're not allowed to say that's not fair in my house. So yeah. don't yeah. come to my house with that Well, that's attitude, not fair Mr. either, Bernard. Josh. That's not fair. <laughs> I got to talk to your kids. I, <laughs> no, I totally agree. I, I love it when my, when my children would say that's not fair. And again, they're adult children. So, But when they would say that, I would say, you're absolutely right. And, and life's not fair. Yeah. So get used to it. I just like complaining <laughs> about the IRS. Jeff's 38 from Niles. Another great question here. Cash flow is always tight and just seems like we're not getting ahead. It uh, doesn't look like others seem to struggle with that same thing. What would you suggest? And I'm assuming lots of people are struggling right now, but you might not you might not see it. But uh. um, yeah, Jeff, here's here's what I would suggest. Delete your social media accounts. <laughs> when you're talking about uh, it doesn't look like others struggle with the same thing. Um, no one's putting on Facebook a picture of the fight that they had with their wife over the budget this week. No, so no. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> or what the credit card balance is up to because they keep on spending at the same level or anything. Yeah, no one's doing Facebook Live saying, hey, we're having a family meeting about our budget and, and it's going to be a knockdown drag out. Because what do we all do? I mean, we all present... We, 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 pre, we try to present to the world the, the best view of ourselves. Yeah. So, Jeff, I would ask the question, first, well, first of all, I would start by not looking at anyone else because it doesn't matter whether anyone else is struggling or not. If everyone else it would, was struggling, would you feel better? No, you, you'd still feel the way you feel, Jeff. It's tight right now, and you're having a hard time making it work. All right, ask the question. Do I have an income problem? Do I have an expense problem? Hey, I've got an income problem. Okay, sign up for Shipped and start delivering groceries, right? Go go deliver pizzas. There's all kinds of this this is the thing. I would encourage you now, Jeff, to be more nimble not only in your thinking but in your behavior than you've ever been because there are things as people are sitting on their couch looking at uh, Facebook or YouTube videos and they're traumatized and not functioning you could be out there functioning. Well, not only be more nimble with your finances, but also more focused on the details. Because Kevin, you asked exactly the right question. When someone has a budgeting problem or a cash flow problem, is it a 
an expense problem or an income problem. You don't know that unless you get down into the details and look at your, your spending. But always assume, first and foremost, that it's an expense problem, that there's somewhere in your financial life that maybe there's some waste happening, some inefficiencies, there's money slipping through the crack. You have to find that first. Because even if you were to throw more income at your situation, if you have an expense problem, that expense problem will eat up any additional income that you throw at it. So begin, first and foremost, you have to have a budget in a situation like this, especially especially if you have had some sort of a shock to your income side of the equation. Mm -hmm. Maybe you or your spouse are unemployed or um, furloughed or, or whatever. You're going to have to make ends meet on less income along the way. Well, the only way that that works is to take really quick, as, as you said, Kevin, nimble uh, corrective action on your on your cash flow. Yeah, it's, it's about margin. Margin's only created when you could say yes, but you choose to say no. And work with a coach, make sure um, they're helping you in that area. Thanks for the question, Jeff and Rick. That is all the time we have for today. On behalf of Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregory, and myself, and all of us at KFG, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.